Our next speaker is Rob Cantor uh, with the Environmental Almanac. Rob teaches and serves as an academic advisor at the U of I in the School of Earth, Sci Society, and Environment. He has a long history at the Middle Fork. He writes and narrates the Environmental Almanac, which is a weekly program that runs as a column in the Sunday edition of the Champaign News Gazette, as well as a radio commentary on WILL AM 580 and other NPR affiliates in Illinois. Rob will be discussing uh, the ecological health as well as the National Scenic River status of the Middle Fork. I didn't get a chance to check out the remote before, so I'm going to do that now. All right. The other speakers on this evening's agenda are here as experts of one sort or another. But I'm really not. I'm here as an enthusiast. If I sound like I know anything about the Middle Fork and its non-human inhabitants, it's not because I ever studied rivers or fish or other wildlife in school, but because that's where my heart takes me whenever life allows. I value the Middle Fork of the Vermilion River for more reasons than I can count. On the Middle Fork, my wife and I have enjoyed leisurely canoe trips with friends, with our kids, with our friends and their kids. When our own kids were young, we also spent a fair bit of time just puttering around in the shallows, catching crayfish and whatever else we found there. On the Middle Fork, a friend and I taught ourselves to fish with fly rods some decades ago. And over the years, we've gotten pretty good at catching smallmouth bass, as well as many of the other 57 species of fish that inhabit the river. On the Middle Fork, I first encountered North American river otters in the wild, up close and personal, after they were restored there in the mid-1990s. When you're standing still by yourself in the river, they often don't notice you from far off, or they're just not bothered much by your presence. I've never gotten good photographs of them, though, so you'll just have to fill in here with your own imagination. Like many of you, I've also enjoyed seeing bald eagles come back to nest on the Middle Fork, especially for the reminder they provide. People in the U.S. have taken a stand against pollution before. Look at the results we've achieved. When I was a kid, I grew up in suburban Cincinnati in the 1960s and 70s. I never expected to see bald eagles in the wild, but people did the right thing. And guess what? We have them up and down the Middle Fork, the Salt Fork, the North Fork. On well, the Middle Fork, I know that freshwater mussels, one of the most endangered groups of animals on Earth, have the conditions they need to thrive. In fact, we have improved things so much that scientists and wildlife managers have brought back species that had previously been killed off in the river. And that's Kevin Cummings with the Natural History Survey holding up an endangered club shell or riffle shell mussel, I forget which. On the Middle Fork, I learned to appreciate the variety of plant and animal life that's supported by bottomland swamps and forests with a friend who stewards the Horseshoe Bottom Nature Preserve. Some of you may recognize him in this picture. If you see me scratching my arms tonight, it's because we were there last week killing invasive shrubs, and I didn't manage to avoid all the poison ivy. <laughs> On the Middle Fork, I've seen members of the East Central Illinois Master Naturalist Program grow in their understanding of aquatic systems and share the joy that rivers can inspire in people. I could go on. In fact, I have gone on. Each of the items I've mentioned has been the focus of at least one environmental almanac segment I've published in the past. And each of those segments covered any number of topics that could have, been made, that could have made another one. Such are the wonders of a complex natural system. The Middle Fork was available for me to discover and explore when I came to live in central Illinois in the late 1980s because others, chief among them, the founders of the group that's today Prairie Rivers Network, fought for more than a decade to prevent construction of a dam that would have completely spoiled its nat rich natural character. 
That victory, I hope, was sealed with the designation of the Middle Fork as a national scenic river in May of 1989. I'm here tonight because I view myself and all of you as stakeholders in the Middle Fork, because the nat natural treasures of the river belong to all of us. And I view Dynegy's coal ash as a threat to those treasures every day it remains in the floodplain. We know that pollution from Dynegy's coal ash pits is fouling the river already, and we know how catastrophic it is when earthen barriers between coal ash pits and rivers fail. We cannot allow that to happen on the Middle Fork. Thank you.